The dyno is the primary way to measure how much power a car is actually putting to the ground. Some cars come with lots of advertised horsepower, but also lots of unadvertised drivetrain loss, meaning anywhere from 10 to 30% of that horsepower goes to waste just spinning the car's own transmission, axle, and wheels. What's really important is how much power and torque actually propels us forward. Although horsepower and torque have been the tried and true measurements of power since long before I was alive, we all had better get used to the newest measurement of power in the performance car handbook, the kilowatt. When a crazy person like Bill Caswell calls me and says, come down south, drive my friend's E36, it makes 400 kilowatts. My first thought is, I don't know what the hell that means. So, when I met up with EV West, I asked them to come here to Dynotech Motorsports so we could put their E36 on the dyno and find out what 400 kilowatts means in terms of horsepower. Let's go. Forty-two horsepower and 850.4 pound-feet of torque uh, at 600 RPM <laughs> peak torque. <laughs> That's nice. 850 to the wheels. It's like a Super Duty with a tune on it. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, I want to drive it. It's a new way to develop torque, and it was interesting to us. We're automotive enthusiasts, we're not, you know, necessarily green people or hippies or anything like that. You know, we're racing the car, so it's not like we did this because we wanted to kind of build a Prius or something like that. We did it because we wanted to develop 800 foot-pounds of torque. Even with a very strong drag transmission, full torque from this motor at zero RPM will cause gearbox parts to basically run away from each other. With a car that develops this much torque, it gobbles up drivetrain components. Uh, we've lost a uh, uh, factory five-speed transmission. We've lost a high-end clutch. Uh, we blew up a M3 diff. And uh, earlier today on the dyno, it looks like we might have done some damage to first gear in the power glide. <laughs> That's your 12 volt system. Still has okay. a regular 12 volt system for the wipers and all the other stuff. Uh -huh. These are your infrared internal motor temperatures. So this is okay. actually, you, since you can't put a sensor on the moving part, we shoot an infrared beam, beam to it and measure it that way. You're kind of getting concerned temperatures around 240. Okay. Um, your do not exceed would be 320. Okay. You get above 240. Uh, what do you turn do? Turn on fan two and just drive it a little mellow. They come down real okay. quick. Yeah, it recovers real quick. So. Then I, so now I can drive? Yep. Okay. I can do this. All right. Good no luck, No problem. Man. We'll see ya. It's a big steering wheel, though. You ready, Tom? Yeah. I think we need one fan and then that, and I'm getting gear. And I think now I can drive, so... Hey, there we go. I'm off. Okay. And then I think I... Yeah. All right. So this is... Uh, you know, very different. Uh, first of all, everything says I'm in a race car here. I'm sitting on the floor. Steering wheel's huge and way up high. I've got a net and some harnesses. Um, and I've got some gauges and a lot of switches and things going on. So I, I don't really feel like I'm in something that's meant for economy or saving the environment. I feel like I'm in something that is designed for going fast. And that's a good start, because if you're gonna say, hey Matt, come drive our electric car, it better be a damn fast electric car. Uh, I've got manual steering and manual brakes, so at 3,800 pounds, this is gonna be the heaviest car I've ever driven with manual steering. Funny thing is, with these DC motors, it's sort of like a big diesel truck engine. Big displacement, but low revving. You know, you picture a Tesla Roadster, which uh, red lines at 14,000 RPM. This red line's at 4,100. So it's very low revving, but it's got some, uh, it's got some grunt. Uh, some people say they, they don't like electric cars because they miss the sound. This sound, there's sound here. I've got, <laughs> look at that go. Oh my God, is that real? Is that an accurate speed? He said this thing's GPS based. If that was an accurate speed, 
This car is way faster than it lets on. To drive this thing is just a kick in the pants. I mean, it just the torque just hits you. It's instant. You don't have to wait for any you know boost to build up or anything like that. So, you know, if you like to kick out the rear end and get the car loose, I mean, it's just it's actually like made for that. So last summer at Pikes Peak, we ran the electric class, and we were the first car for a street car. Uh, so we won that class, and for the whole electric division, we got fourth place, and I believe we were 51st overall. Altitude doesn't affect our car like it affects all the gassers. They're down about 20% on horsepower at altitude, and for us, the electric motor just ran the same as it would at sea level. I like this car, though, because it makes weird space noises. <laughs> Oh, what's the word? It's deceptive when you've got, you know, sound, but not the traditional engine noise. When you have sort of a rubber bandy tug, a shove rather than a, uh, a slam. It's very weird. You don't really notice how fast you're going until it's time to slow down. I mean, look, this is neat. I get, all right, tons of torque, super cool. I mean, very, very clean build, very nice. But at the same time, is this something I want? Do I want to see electric race cars and electric racing series? I don't know. Seems like it kind of defeats the purpose of going to the track if you're just going to be going just hearing electric cars all day. I do like not having to shift. Just throw it in a second and go. So what my partner Matt Haber and I do here at EV West is we really try to be like a race engineering firm. We try to kind of do a lot of the engineering and front load of the work and, and you know, develop the car uh, into a system that we can repeat easily. Now at this point it would be really easy for us to build another M3 E36. I think the biggest challenge with converting a car at this stage is just money, you know. Um, all the parts, all the components are there, the technology is ready for this. Uh, we just need a couple more guys that are willing to spend some money and kind of step up and experiment with stuff like this. You know, if the OEMs aren't going to do it, it's kind of on our shoulders. EV West is a great place to visualize the innards of potential future engines. Pistons. Heads. Driveline. Cooling the gas station, the fuel. It's a new chain of events. But I'm still torn about whether or not I like the idea of an EV race car, track car. I mean, making it heavier makes it worse. There's no doubt about it. Adding weight to it makes it worse. Now, adding a ton of torque certainly makes it fun, but it's kind of the same thing as driving, you know, an 800 horsepower, 900 horsepower GTR. You know, if this was just an M3, with a gas motor and it weighed 2,200 pounds, I think I'd be having a little more fun. I think I need to, I need, I need to go home and think about whether or not this is good. And I'll get back to you. What I like about EV West is they aren't here to make commuter cars or save the planet. They develop electric race cars, and this M3 is unquestionably a race car. It's uncomfortable, it's got heavy controls, it's hot, loud, and rough. It absolutely hates going slow, but it's not supposed to be a Model S. Race cars are supposed to go as fast as possible, and this is without question the fastest electric vehicle I've ever driven. As history has shown, racing is the fastest way to improve a car. And even lukewarm as I am about electric cars in general, hopefully EV West will do the same with racing's newest component in need of development, the battery.